Ah, welcome back once again. Pull up a chair, get a drink. You've earned it. Especially in a place as beautiful as this. Anyway. It is... Let us jump to the first day of summer. Well, a great deal happened. Also, most of it boring. However, Anna had become a powerful enough priestess that she was able to help a little bit with the withdrawals. Fino had come to understand that these people meant no harm and were just trying to eke out a small existence. Content with that, it was decided that he could leave. Meanwhile, Tomboy and Luna were, well, lovers now. And the hawk and jerk had their first child, Minoka. Also of note, Bowman had taken to crafting up some jewelry. Finally. However, also of note was the stockpiles. Oh goodness, the stockpiles. Oh, where to even begin? The stockpiles were, quite frankly, overflowing. With steel, of all things, so it had once been such a rare resource for them, it was now surprisingly common. It had taken an entire season. They were almost cleared out of all of the items from the enemy. And even received a little bit of demon scale for their efforts. It had been so hectic that they'd even found it easier to just go ahead and build a second tailor's loom. However, the spirits warned Kamisa that a group of giant forest constrictors is moving into the area and most intent on doing harm to any and all. Mm -hmm. 
So once again... It befell Ithel. And Davenport. And just like that, once again, For once, the enemy fell most easily. Only it could always be so easy. Unfortunately, all of Kat's minions died trying to protect the community. Not that such extra planar creatures were missed. And Bowman was pregnant again. This time, she actually seemed cross about it. That was a little concerning to some. She seemed almost not to care last time. When pressed by Andriel, she just shrugged and said it interferes with her life now. This was even more confusing. Now, how so? Bowman refused to say anything. Most confusing and concerning. Finally, though, they were getting close to being done. Hauling everything back. Only a couple more things. It boggled the mind. But even with another shelf full of 700 
steel. Hmm. And how many times they had traded off steel. They still had almost 2,000 and might very well have 2,000 by the time it was done. Another person fell from the sky. Though there was no immediate danger of their death by the look of it, Trunka still quickly went ahead and did what he could. But they would always do. Save the strangers. However, with so much steel, Camisa took it upon herself to go ahead and build a little, turn a little bit into some weaponry. However, to her dismay, there was really only one person in any position to receive such weaponry, and, well... More giant forest constrictors. Troubling. Is something going on that they weren't aware of? Had the elf that they had released actually betrayed them instead? It was hard to say. The two of them did not just loose arrows, they rained arrows.
They were getting good at this. Working in tandem. And yet, and yet, it presented them with a new problem. For now they had the issue a very rare issue of having far far too much food. And another. The first one was an elfin, a stable hybrid between elves and humans. And this one is a little different. and in much more desperate need of rescue. This lizard folk was most unusual. That mattered not. All that mattered is that this creature was safe.
more meat than they knew what to deal with. And so they made a decision. As soon as Tronka ate, he would go ahead and take all the horses A bit of hay and dried meat. More than what he needed, and he knew it. Some meat. It would clear out some of the stockpiles. Trying to make more space. But of course, the main thing that was occupying Their stockpile was steel. The temperature inside was still not dropping. This was troubling for them. Of course, they all knew the reason why. Too many people were coming in and out. So Camisa leapt into action. It was, in a way, ironic. She had been honestly warned about this by, of all people, Bowman. Meanwhile, the young child Pex was growing ever faster. Showing some good degree of intelligence, but also showing that 
They were, indeed, an athletic young man. The boy did love to run so much. As soon as the scroll was finished, Bowman took it upon herself to read it. She knew that her magical reserves would be weakened. By the using the spell. But it was far better than the alternative. All of their food going to waste was not something that she relished. It was a late into the night when Tronka arrived. Most of what genuinely interested him there was no way that he would be able to afford So instead, he took it upon himself to just go ahead and gift it. Gift it all. This pleased their allies. Please their allies greatly. Causing them to once again affirm their kinship. In a strange way, it was no surprise that Goodwin decided to join. They did not know much about the fellow yet. But they seem to have a rough life. Alas, some of their efforts were in vain as animals began to rot. There's little that they could do about it, though. doing all that they could just to try and hold back the tides. That was quite the odd noise, isn't Is the cat all right? Yes? Yes, the cat is... Okay, fine. And Tomboy... 
revealed that now it was her turn to be pregnant. At this rate, the nursery would not be big enough. However, that seemed to only irritate Bowman more. Even worse, now more and more fights were breaking out. Goodwin, unfortunately, is not good for too much. But another cook was always appreciated. Luna's addiction finally caused her to go into a daze. And something that was understood far too well by... by Bowman. Goodwin requested to be moved to a different room. They agreed, discovering his room full of filth. Her room full of filth. I apologize. And with that, the cause of the strange rot was discovered. Goodwin... had been rotting the frozen corpses. Nexocan was now officially a child. And they hoped that this was not an auspicious timing, discovering something so foul. 
They tried to tell themselves that it was just biology. However, they also knew that it would only cause further problems. And they discussed it as much as they were loath to do so. It was decided that as soon as as soon as Goodwin was healed, she would unfortunately have to be asked to go. Corpse feeders were not common, and they were not so superstitious as to think that she would try and feed on them. But corpse feeders needed to be provided corpses directly. This was the problem. They felt so guilty. When some beggars showed up trying to get money to rescue a friend who was kidnapped, Andriel, knowing what was, what was coming, quickly leapt to action. While the group did know that, unfortunately, the person who they had rescued simply had to go, that did not mean that they had to be cruel about it. It just meant that once Goodwin was healthy again, Fortunately, she seemed to be healing just fine. Or perhaps not. This was odd, and they called upon Anna. To help poor Goodwin. and then gave Goodwin the bad news. Nobody liked it. And 
but as it turned out, lizard folk were notorious for not refraining from corpse feeding. They had gone through so many of the giant forest constrictors. They watched Goodwin go with a heavy heart. Guilt racking their hearts, their souls. As Goodwin had left, she had muttered something to herself about wealth management and how the people were not doing so. Strange words. Nobody paid heed. Well, the corpse of one of the minions was decomposing and producing quite a lot of rot. It was, perhaps, better than taking it to the stockpile for the deceased animals. That would surely cause lung rot. With how poorly that had gone over, they decided to beg Kala's forgiveness. May the goddess of compassion forgive them for what they had done. At night, they released the Sky Lanterns, watching them up, up into the sky.
It seemed to work. But it did not end their guilt. However, before you leave this time, there is one other incident that I do want to tell you about. It was something that had been a possibility for quite some time. So, while everyone slept well throughout the night, Kamisa had worries. She had confessed her fears to Bowman after... The, ca the gathering for Kala. Bowman had listened. And given her her assurances that all would stand next to Kamisa and what she was about to endeavor on. When Kamisa awoke, She was nervous almost to the point of illness, waiting for Shelia and Ithil to awaken. And once they had eaten, It began. The entire community drew together and listened as she described as she ascended to the role of fate speaker. She knew the most about magic out of everyone. So she took it upon herself to guide the others. And The very first thing that she requested was inside of the laboratory specifically for the studying of magic. that a bubble of citrine and timber be built. A 
a glowstone lamp. Hopefully this would be the initial journey into a great deal. Thank you, my friends. We will speak again later. Until then.